Okay guys, so I wanted to show y'all how to essentially make your own version of like your tap link or something like that for your social media or social profiles using Webflow. So if you've been searching around social media a lot, I'm sure you've seen people's profiles using something like a, a tap link or link tree or something like that to showcase all their links. Um, but there are other ways you can do this if you have a Webflow site. And so the benefits of this is if you already have a Webflow site, personally, I hate uh, having to upload content on the Webflow CMS, then go somewhere else and post the links and everything and update in all these places. Uh, however, due to the power of the Webflow CMS, you can actually create these yourself. And you post once and it's already everywhere you need it. And the cool thing is it's already using the URL that you need as well. And so I'm gonna show you how to do this using Webflow. I'm gonna real quickly show you an example of it finished. So looking at the computer here, we have um, an example of one done for uh, another essentially side project my wife and I do. And here you can see I have where people can purchase a product, uh, the name of it, they have a link to the latest YouTube video showing the preview. I have other links here, links to blog posts, and then go back to the website. And so this is pretty much everything we need here. And so instead of using an external service like Linktree or anything similar, um, it's just we post all in one place and it's already up. And the cool thing too is due to Webflow, we can already optimize for mobile. And so I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through that. And I'm actually gonna provide this templates as well, you can duplicate on um, the Webflow uh, showcase site. So let's go ahead and create one. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is open up a Webflow project. Now, this is if you wanna create one, cause you can pretty much go all out and do whatever the heck you want due to the power of Webflow. Um, but again, I'm gonna leave this link in the description to where you can duplicate this. Now here, I'm actually gonna be following the client first system and actually pulling off of a uh, Relooms uh, library so you'll also get all those benefits as well if you do decide to copy this but again you can do whatever you want to do so I've already built my page structure here and we do have all of of these okay now if you're following client first you're pretty familiar with all this stuff here if you're not um, essentially what we're doing is making just a main wrapper for everything and in here inside the page um, and then we have our padding and then our container for our content and then our uh, padding for the content in here as well. So in here is where we can start laying out our elements. Um, so first thing we, we'd want to do is make sure we have our collection list made here. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and make a few because we are going to need some. So we're going to need, uh, let's just do blog posts. Okay. And let's do create a collection. And then I'm going to do, let's see here. And then let's do events. All right, create collection. So let's try that, all right? So we have these two. I'm gonna add five items here. And then I'm also gonna add five items here as well. Okay. So now we have everything staged that we need. Perfect, and we have that. So. We're gonna already need the CMS essentially built for the items that you're gonna to need to use. Because the reason why is we're gonna to need to do this inside of collection lists. So uh, what we're gonna to wanna to do is follow, is essentially title this page, right? So we can go ahead and add a heading here. All right. So here, uh, again, I'm actually going to, what's my body type? System UI. Let's fix that. So let's do, ask do a monster. That was not bad. Okay, so here we're gonna have our heading, okay? Now that's fine for the size I wanna go ahead and do. We can see that on mobile, perfect. So we can say, um, you know, company name links here. So we'll do that, all right? And so now we're gonna to wanna to start building the links that we're gonna want people to go to. And the, the great thing about utilizing the CMS is that anytime you've already updated something here, put it live, it's gonna show up here, all right? So first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is I am going to actually um, put in another div block. I'm gonna name this event, oops, events, links, components. So it's actually gonna be an underscore component. 
All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and put in my collection list. So we want to have our collection list in here. And the reason why I'm saying component, because then everything in here I know is going to be following that same naming system. So then it's collection list wrapper. So I'm going to name it event events links uh, wrapper. So underscore. Okay. And then we have our events links list. And then we're going to have an item. So I need to link this to our events. All right. Boom. We're going to do our events here. Perfect. So now we have our five. But let's say I don't want to show five. So maybe because to make this thing more wield, uh, wieldy for um, later on, I'm going to limit the items. I'm going to do show three, start at one. Okay. And so that's going to, starting at one is going to be your most updated one. Okay, so we have three events here. I actually made a slight tweak really quick. Um, I'm going to name the, um, I'm going to make our events section and then our header section here. So right now I want this to company name links. Right now we're going to do event links, but I'm actually going to, all right, let's just name this events. Or how about upcoming events? All right. So here we do that like at a heading two. All right. Make that a little smaller because we want this to, to be known as the company links here. I'm doing this just for my padding reasons. Okay. So here we have again our, our, our items and I'm just going to go ahead and do them in a simple list. So similar to how you probably see them in like a link tree or, or something like that. Um, but again, you can get as crazy as you want. I know I'm doing desktop, but I mean, thankfully Webflow we can develop for mobile pretty easily, but we'll clean that up when we get there. So now inside of each item, I'm going to go ahead and do a div block as well. And so we have collection item. I'm going to name this events links item. Okay. And then we're going to have all of our styling on the inside here. <clears throat> okay. So now we have the wrapper. So now I want to do events links item wrapper. Okay. And I'm doing all this styling for a reason, just so we know what all these elements are. Whenever you see them, you're not like seeing random blank div blocks or in the code. So you know what they are. If your client sees them, they know what they are. You don't have to do this. It's just um, something I've kind of been practicing, learning and, and um, really enjoying doing. Okay, so now we have each, each item here. Now for our events, if we wanna go back, we can make sure make sure what we have in here. So in events, we have our start dates, we have our location, description, short description, images, RSVP links. So there's some things we need to have here, okay? Um, and the name, of course. So let's go ahead and get out of here. Now that we know we have that, uh, I do wanna have an, uh, an image in here. So I'm actually going to make another div block. Now, what I'm gonna wanna do is probably have the a square image right here and a one-to-one -one ratio. Thankfully, Reloom already has that. So I can actually go in here and say uh, image uh, wrapper one, one. Okay. And then inside of it, I can do an image and then I can go ahead and choose image from events, select field image. Perfect. Inside of here, I can actually say image wrapper image okay perfect so now we have each image in there now i'm noticing there are uh, again some spacing issues here so i'm actually just going to give each one of these a padding of uh, let's do two rems for now and just give them some space in between okay so that is now working as intended all right great Okay, but now let's say I don't want the image to take up this much width of the row there. So in this scenario, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make another div block. So I don't ruin that styling. I'm gonna go ahead and since this takes up 100%, so it's gonna fill up 100% here. I'm gonna go ahead and make this our um, image wrapper. Okay, I'm gonna bring this inside. And here, this width, I want it to be 20%. That way, it's now going to only take up 20% of the width of our, our item here. All right. And again, 
I am missing my bottom padding. Two rims there. Great. That's my space in between now. So now we have our event uh, image here. Okay. And maybe we want to have just a little bit of, of space in between them. So what I can even do is let's say I want a bottom line. All right. And let's do that just at two pixels. Just got a nice bottom line here. Now in this case, I don't want this to be a link block because I want this to be able, people to be able to RSVP. You can't put a link within a link. So that's why I'm doing that. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, is actually now start styling the rest here. So I'm gonna do another div block, all right? So I'm gonna name this one. Now, because I'm gonna do this, I'm actually gonna make this guy a flex box. So I'm actually gonna make this a flex box just so everything here can go ahead and fill up that space. And I'm gonna need to change the styling on this too for simplicity. Um, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and name this side the events links contents, okay? So now there's the content here. I don't want this just to take up this space, make that pretty simple. Um, and I'm gonna want some padding on the inside, so probably of just one rim to the right there just so it does not touching up against this here. But now we want all of our content in here. So here, we're gonna go ahead and do um, another, we can actually just do this, this is a text block, a simple text block. And then we can go ahead and put a paragraph, the description, um, maybe make sure, is that a rich? So short description, perfect. Now here, I want to name this my, uh, heading medium, maybe. Um, no, let's go ahead and do heading small. I'm doing heading small because it's not going to need to take up that much room. But I also don't want it to be an H, uh, one of the H tags, SEO reasons. So that's why I'm doing it like this. And then here we can go ahead and name this uh, text size. Now, where is my regular? Regular. Okay, perfect. Which is already how it is here. However, I would like my this to be medium. I find the light is just really small when it comes to uh, this stuff here. So now we have our, um, since we are set up here, now we have the description, this, and we need to have our dates. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put our text block in here as well. And let's, let's just see. So I, I need to get my event from my start date and time, so July 20th. Great. So uh, it doesn't look like there is a time involved in this template, so that works. But let's do that just so we have the actual day of the week as well. Now here, uh, I want to actually have this text large. The reason why is I want that to stand out a little more. Or I can even make that. Just for simplicity's sake, so heading. Uh, do heading extra small, just so it makes it a little larger. So you have heading small, heading extra small, okay? And so this is going to be the name of the event. Boom, it's the name of the event. And we have our heading. And then I wanna have our uh, button, okay? And this is gonna get the, it's gonna actually get the link from the RSVP. Perfect. And I want to style this as well, my button. And your button, and I'm going to do button small. It's not that big of a button, okay? And I do want to separate these a little bit as well. So I'm going to make two more div blocks. This one is going to have my heading and then my text size. And then this one is going to have the extra small and then the RSVP button. Great. Now each of these needs to be named. So event, so content, top. And then I'm actually going to duplicate that one, but then duplicate cast and rename it. There we go, great. 
So now what I can do is I can actually make this guy flex box, do vertical, and then space them out this way. That way it just gives it a little bit more breathing room for you have the dates and then the RSVP link here. There can probably be a better way for you to style this depending on whatever you want to do. I'm just doing this for simplicity's sake and on my purposes. Now we have our upcoming events made, right? So this is everything that's upcoming. You can do some more advanced filtering too. That's just what I'm doing for here. Now, let's say I would like to duplicate all this over. So I'm just keeping all my all my containers and everything here. Actually, I need to do the whole section. All right. So this one, move class, let's name it section blog links. Great. So now we have our section here for the blog links. And in order to make sure we're keeping everything here the same, I'm gonna get rid of that whole section. Remove this, so we're gonna have my blog links components. And everything on the inside is now going to follow this naming as well. So now we have uh, blog posts. Okay. Now, since we're designing on desktop, uh, I think I wanna make all of these a card. So for now, I am going to put in my collection list, collection list, and this time around, we're gonna do our blog post. So now we have our, C, our CMS system. So now what we can do is you can publish this, all right? And from here, you can go ahead and put that inside of your bio, you can link to products, you can do all this stuff in there. So what you'll, you'll do is essentially everything you start to have, if you have products, if you're doing e-commerce and shopping, then you'll have those. Um, you can just build whatever the heck you want in here. And so if you're already using Webflow, this is perfect to do. You can copy this over, apply this straight to your site, or you can take this tutorial and create something for yourself. And just like the example I showed with my project, that's what I had did. And I use this for my portfolio as well. So the separate, this one work is separate. I have them, everything, all the content I need separate. I hope you enjoy this, this is helpful, and I hope it gets your gears turning for you to create something of your own. So I hope that helps, and I'll see y'all in the next one.